I wanted to knock out a video about using my LG G2 OLED TV here with my 3090 Ti gaming PC, specifically for VRR with G-Sync in the right settings that I found to operate VRR properly, which are in some ways a little bit counterintuitive. So when I first got the LG G2 set up, I was really excited to try out VRR, particularly the fact that you can fully take advantage of G-Sync with the NVIDIA GPU, power up my gaming to HDMI 2.1, 120 hertz. As I found, it, it wasn't so simple as just kind of turning on a few settings to kind of run VRR optimally on a PC with a, a display, a television, like this sort. So after a bunch of reading and digging through a variety of forums and kind of looking for some best practices and setting suggestions, I kind of found and arrived at the set of settings that I'm running right now. And I want to kind of go over that and then give a bit of a demonstration about why kind of they are what they are. So first of all, if I just pull up the, the game bar, the game optimizer menu, we can see I am running NVIDIA G-Sync on the connection right now. If I looked at the game optimizer itself, currently 119 FPS, I'm running the desktop at 120 Hertz. I'll show that in a second. If I scroll down here, I do have the VRR and G-Sync enabled. AMD FreeSync Premium disabled, again, using a EVGA for the Win3 Ultra 3090Ti. So on the TV, really, other than going into Game Optimizer mode and setting those settings, um, in addition, of course, to just having the, the deep color, the 4K deep color setting on for the HDMI 2.1, high FPS, high bandwidth in that, that's really it on the TV side. More of the, the tricks of this that I found fall on actually the PC side. So let's take a look at those. If I go into the NVIDIA Control Center, Control Panel, and I take a look through some of these settings here, you can see on the Setup G-Sync option, I am enabled, Enable G-Sync, G-Sync compatible. The computer is detecting that we're connecting to a G-Sync compatible monitor. I do have it enabled for windowed and full screen mode, covering both types of games. I have the display, the one display connected, so of course that's the one uh, selected LG Electronics TV, G-Sync compatible, and the checkbox here in number three, display specific settings, enable settings for the selected display model. So pretty straightforward setup there, but that's really not the trick. Um, the, the trick that I found lies under the 3D settings themselves for games and three specific settings in here. So one of, is just the monitor technology, this shows up as G-Sync compatible. It did by default anyway, when you're connected to a G-Sync compatible monitor. So that one's fine, but you do want to verify that that is set. And then I'm actually limiting my FPS to 115, even though I'm taking advantage of this connection for essentially 120 Hertz VRR display. I'm limiting game rendering via the NVIDIA control panel to 115 FPS. And we'll talk a little bit more about why that is in a second. But in conjunction with that, the other setting that I wanted to call out is that I am in fact enabling VSync in the NVIDIA control panel directly. So G-Sync compatible display, 115 FPS max frame rate, and VSync on. Now this seems a little counterintuitive. Why would you actually limit your FPS slightly below essentially the 120 hertz 120 fps cap of the television and why would you go turning vsync on if you're using vrr the issue is that games don't always render right to the requested maximum refresh rate of the monitor or even to the frame rate limit that you might specify and what you want to basically avoid is having your games go over those limits to the point where vsync is actually in its normal form like required and engages and adds input lag and and does the negative things essentially to your game rendering that vsync does by setting a frame rate limit at 115 five frames lower than the refresh rate of the display even when the gpu basically gets ahead of itself or the system gets ahead of itself and you might actually tick some frame rates at moments in time above the set limit you still remain under refresh rate limit of the display and thus still comfortably in that general VRR range to the point where VSync, again, in its normal form, 
doesn't have to engage. It doesn't have to start interacting with the rendering and operation and such of the game at that limit. And a lot of folks that I've seen recommending this will say, well, you go two to three FPS or under the uh, refresh rate of your display. So go 117, go 118. In my gaming, specifically with something like Hot Wheels, I've been playing a lot of Hot Wheels Unleashed with my son and paying attention to the actual frame rates that the game is indicating, that the TV is indicating. With 100 F 115 FPS frame rate limit, I still see frame rates reported up to 118 and even 119. I never see 120 though. So that's telling me that actually two to three frames under the display cap is a little too thin. And if you really, really wanna make sure that you stay in the VRR range, you wanna go more like three or four. And so I just went ahead and rounded it off to five. Honestly, plus or minus a frame when we're already at 115 is gonna be so negligible and so unnoticeable that I would rather just have the PC always comfortably under the display refresh rate limit, even if I know I might be leaving a couple of frames, nominally speaking, off the table all the time. Again, fully rendering at 115 or 116 or 117, that, that delta is worth less to me than really making sure that, that the computer always just stays in the VRR range, out of the maximum refresh rate of the display, and out of that VSync range. And so then the next question is, why do you turn VSync on if you're never hitting the display maximum and needing to have the rendering of the image kind of throttled, right, or held back or synced up to the maximum of the, of the display? And I've read a lot of technical explanations for this in Reddits and forums and other places, articles and details. And the prevailing thought seems to very strongly be that when you're operating down in the VRR range, VSync doesn't do what VSync always normally does. And it's actually providing frame pacing and other like stabilizing benefits in a different type of form than again, when you're operating VSync at the display's refresh rate limit. Cap that frame count a little com comfortably and more than comfortably less than where the refresh rate limit is and turn the VSync on in the drivers themselves. Turn VSync off in the games. And if a game has a frame rate limit itself, go ahead and turn that off as well. You don't want to have that kind of competing with the frame rate limit of the NVIDIA drivers, the NVIDIA control panel. Now I found some games are still limited less than that. Um, as you saw in my wallpaper there, I had Transformers Devastation up. That was the last PC game that I actually just played. And that game is actually hard locked at 60 FPS. So even with all these settings, that's fine, that works. 60 is way less than the 115. Everything is still operating in the VRR range and in the G-Sync range and holding and rendering, no, no uh, maximum capability of the display, no normal V-Sync negative interaction. Okay, so we're back here in the NVIDIA control panel and I just wanna show that we are in fact running at PC resolution here. There's old, these old various Ultra HD, H, HD SD options at the top, but if you want to be able to get to the 120 hertz refresh rate, you have to come down here to the PC option at the bottom, 3840 by 2160. I am set to 120 hertz. All right, so here we are in Hot Wheels. We're about to start a race and kind of showing the track and rendering the track. I have the game optimizer back up, and you can see right off the bat here some of the, the, the violation essentially, right? of the 115 FPS limit as the, the image that you're seeing, the track is kind of being rolled through with the camera and shown. We're not at a fixed 115 and we're jumping up um, even as high, even as high as 119. That's a plus four on the 115, but not hitting 120. And again, not getting up to the limit of the display, hanging just, just a hair underneath it, just a frame underneath it. Again, staying out of that full on VRR range. Didn't even need to race the track. This is enough of a, of a showing to kind of prove the point that you do in fact sometimes get a little more than two to three frames above the fixed FPS limit that you may have set. If I pull up the other more detailed VRR display, the fractional hertz, we can see, I can see some 118s. Never see a 120. 118 and change, which was rounding up to 119 in the game optimizer display. So there you go.
PC G-Sync VRR on an LG G2 OLED 3090Ti NVIDIA GPU using FPS limiters and V-Sync as you would want to configure them for this type of operation. But let me know, what are you gaming on? How do you have it set up? Do you use VRR? I'm really loving VRR in general and being able to just let my frame rates go. Some of the games, quite a few games actually on a 3090Ti can hit that 115 FPS limit. Newer stuff, I'm still finding myself like God of War 2018. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to play that all the way through here pretty soon. can get in the 70s, 80s FPS, fully maxed out, native 4K. Getting this G2, I think for gaming, PC gaming in particular, has just been awesome. This is a PC gaming monitor, taking advantage of real G-Sync, and I'm just completely floored with the way it looks, the way it plays, and all that. So I'll be making more PC G2 content coming up talking about HDR and other elements um, and experiences and impressions of gaming on it. So if you have questions, post away in the comments. Let me know what you would like to know, and I can make sure to try to cover it in a future video. Please do all the regular YouTube stuff, like subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Thanks so much for watching.